I've left a picture of the sphere here for purposes of an example that will illustrate the following definition. I briefly mentioned last time about smooth homotopies and how there's a very closely related notion where you replace the closed interval 0, 1 with all of R and look at a whole family of diffeomorphisms. So a flow on a manifold M consists of a smooth function and this time we've replaced the unit interval with all of R and not only have we replaced this with all of R but this set of this family of diffeomorphisms smooth functions satisfies the following conditions one is that phi t when you restrict phi to any point t this is a diffeomorphism b when you say that t equals zero we actually get the identity And thirdly, now this condition may seem a little strange, but it says that when you add any two times, then this is the composition of two such families um, at the two respective times. So these three conditions can actually be summarized in terms of groups in the following way. Um, this is sort of a remark, but I think it's a very helpful remark now that we know what the definition is of a Lie group. All we have to do is replace uh, manifold with set in those different uh, diagrams, and we'll get what the definition is of an ordinary group. And so we can replace this by saying that there's an associated map to this, which I'll call uh, phi tilde, and this is a function from R to the set of diffeomorphisms of M and this is a group because whenever you compose diffeomorphisms they're always invertible by just taking the inverse function and what I mean by the tilde here is that at T this function gets sent to a diffeomorphism of M given by having the right hand as the input variable. So this is a function from M to M and by assumption it's a diffeomorphism. And because this is a group, the set of real numbers is also a group under addition. So I can, I can write that this is a group homomorphism where R is a group under addition. And this just means that the identity goes, goes to the identity. That's what this means because 0 is the identity for the addition in R. And when you add two numbers, then that goes to the composition of the two diffeomorphisms respectively. And there's something very important about flows on manifolds and that they give rise to vector fields. We have a theorem. And the theorem, it says, using the notation from above, we can actually define a vector field on a manifold given any such flow. And let's assume for this statement that M is a subset of RK. So we can set a function V from M to RK and the assignment sends any point X on M to VX but what is VX? We use the flow that we have and what we do is we differentiate this flow at time t equals 0 at any point X. So if I restrict to the second coordinate I fix that one so I fix that second coordinate. So we have phi blank x. This now becomes a function of t, a function of time. 
And so I can take the derivative of that function. It's a function from, t, from r to m. So I can take the derivative of that at 0. And this will give me just a vector if I just take its derivative. So let me write this. Technically, I mean, um, because this is a differential, I apply the vector 1 at 0. But I can also equivalently write this as d dt t x, and then evaluate at t equals 0. Yet another way, this time, for instance, writing the definition out, this is the limit as t goes to 0 of phi t x minus phi x, which is, by the way, the identity, over t. This is a vector field, and one example we'll take as this sphere, and it's a smooth not only is it a, this is a smooth tangent vector field, let me say that, um, defines a smooth tangent vector field on M. And as an example, let's take the sphere and let's take the one parameter family, also, also called a flow. A flow is sometimes called a one parameter family of diffeomorphisms. Let's take the flow that sends r cross s to s2, and it's the restriction of the rotation along the z-axis. This is the restriction of the rotation. Let's call this big phi, since I want to denote um, the restriction by lowercase phi. And this is cosine t minus sine t, 0, 0, 1, sine t, cosine t, 0, 0. So you can check that this restricts to a one parameter, sorry, this restricts to a flow on the sphere. And that's because it takes any x, y, z to another point on the sphere. And we can also calculate what the vector field is at the point x, y, z. The associated vector field, which we, by the way, call, aka, the infinitesimal generator of phi. Phi is the restriction of big phi to S2. So the associated vector field at x, y, z, let's say, which is a point on the sphere, all I do is I plug this in and differentiate it by this formula. So we take ddt of this matrix. Um, let me even not write that. I know it's, I have the formula here, phi t um, at x, y, z. And if I plug this in, well, x, y, z has no t dependence, so I just take the derivative of this and evaluate it, by the way, at 0. Then this just gives me, if you actually calculate this out, gives you negative y, x, um, zero. So this here, this is an element of the tangent space at the point x, y, z of S2. And it defines a vector field on all of S2, and it looks something like this. You're sort of, you have a vector field that points around the sphere, and as you go closer to the North Pole, the magnitude of that vector field decreases. That's because x and y are getting smaller and smaller. And again, as you go to the equator, that's when it's the largest. And again, smaller as you go to the south pole. And so this actually gives us a flow on S2 whose infinitesimal generator is given by the vector field obtained in this fashion. So you might ask, if I'm given a flow, I can get a vector field through this procedure. But what if I'm given a flow? We've studied differential equations in Euclidean space, 
and we know that we can calculate integral curves for them. But we don't yet know exactly when we can do that. What are the conditions in which an integral flow exists for all time? And what about what happens if can two different flows somehow cross each other? I want to make sure that the integral curves actually define a flow to a particular vector field. And we'll discuss this later when we talk about the existence and uniqueness for differential equations and their solutions.